Well, good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to Real Estate Backstory. Every week we all we go through the underside Billy of the real estate. And uh, anyways, Alan. Uh, my name's Alan Rich. I'm the managing broker here at Maximum Realtor Realtor Partners. We do this every Monday, trying to start off your week with a good way to kind of get going, uh, all those kind of things happening in the real estate space. We want to kind of start off today talking about the fact that realtors are feeling a lot more optimistic at the moment. Confidence is really rising in our industry at the moment. And so like, you know, the National Association of Realtors, every month they pull uh, realtors just to see, you know, like, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? And overall, so far, we are like 36% more optimistic this year than we were last year kind of thing. At the I same time. I don't think it can go lower than last year. Well, but, I yeah. mean, well, but. It, it's it's showing. Even our sellers are, are are looking a lot more optimistic. We have more list, more listings coming up right now. Uh, even though it, it's it, you know th there are challenges to home buying, first time home buyer percentages in January really shot up, like like up up, up substantially kind of thing. And so all in all, we're looking at at, at some real good. Um, you know, it's one of those things where in the real estate space how you feel really affects a lot of, of how well you do. And so uh, because so many of us are or not, I mean, we're all independent contractors, but it's one of those where like, like when you feel down, it's hard to kind of, you know, get yourself up and running and, and feeling like, like you're ready to rock and roll and do those kind of things. So it, it's, it's a very important that, that we really kind of look at that. And it's sometimes yeah. about perception, how you address those, what I call pain points, as one of my mm -hmm. agents told me, or my point is fear. Yep. So once you can identify what those pain points or fears are, then you know exactly what you need to do to combat that. Some are compatible, some are not. So, uh, but do listen to your client. So we want to ask you a question and we kind of want to tell you what we think some of our answers are. And so it starts off with, or our big question is, are paper business cards a waste of money? Should you still, like, like in today's digital age, should you do away with paper business cards? And, and I don't think you should necessarily, but I don't think you should only have a business, a paper business card anymore. The, da the days of, of just being able to, uh, you know, and, and the way that we interact with business cards is one of those things that, you know, do I think you need one? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it, it's it's a given that you should have a paper business card. However, what do you do when somebody gives you a business card? I mean, a lot of times we'll be polite and take it, and we, I may put it in my wallet, and and it, it may make it into into the you know the center console of my truck, and eventually I'm going to end up throwing all that stuff away. Yeah. And I don't want to be mean about it, but that's just kind of thing. Most people take business cards, and eventually they just like. Chuck them, well, right? They're just gone. You never know. We do have some folks that like paper. I mean, I, for one, mm. like paper to a certain extent. So it just depends on the individual. Well, what I really want to talk to you about is, is not necessarily discarding your paper business cards, but what else can you be adding in there or, or what else can addition. you use, right? And so like, like, like we are uh, like, like I'm a popple user kind of thing. And so, um, like, like, can you use digital business cards in addition? Now, now the big benefit here is that it gets me into your contact list and it also gets you into my contact list. Like, like, and there's a bunch of places we can do. We're not, we're not necessarily pushing anybody's product. Like, like we use popple, but that doesn't mean that that's the only one out there. And so there, there's blink mobilio link there's a bazillion others. Some folks use their phone and, and it'll be an app that you can put on your phone mm -hmm. you can, and you can just share that out with, with other folks. Some folks, it's going to be like, here's, here's my key tag kind of thing. And so, you know, I just touch that up to your phone. Now, when I touch that to your phone, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you my contact information. It's also going to say, would you like to send this information back to Alan too? And so this is great for being able to pass information in two directions. It's not just like, like if you give me a business card, it may never make it into my into my phone. And and really that's what we need. We need to be into people's phones here. So do if you're going to give Alan your information to a digital not just Alan. Not, not just Alan. <laughs> not just Alan. I'm not the only one like this kind of thing. But like 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 when you meet somebody, rather than, than just giving them a business card and then well, they never call. Like 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 
put this into their phone. Like, like we live on these phones, you know, these, these things, this is, this is a big deal here. Like, and so when, when we can be inside there, you, you know, that person's contact list, that's a very powerful place to be. It makes it also much easier when they do need to buy and sell a house, they can find your information immediately and not just have to go digging through the junk drawer, looking at old business cards. So, that's it. So anyway, um, I know that, that you know, a, a lot of agents are, are, are like nostalgic for it. I, I totally get it. Please don't do away with your business cards, but it have is, more than one is right. what I'm saying. So, right. yeah. so for me, when I store a contact, I normally put on a company what type of business they're in. So when I do a search, I have a array of either home inspectors, uh, warranty company, or what have you. So it's an easier way yeah. to search that way. You'll never make it in my phone that way. I'm just being honest. So like, like, like yeah, give it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, can you get extra cash from your house? I know this, this is kind of an odd topic here, but but we just recently sold a house to to a client. And guess what? They they immediately went out and started renting their property on Sniff Spot. And so like like they had a fenced in yard, had you know, the folks okay. they bought the house from kind of thing had a had a huge area in there already set up for it. And they didn't have dogs, but they're like, well, it wouldn't bother me. Folks are renting out their yards for like eight to fifteen bucks an hour for people with dogs. And yes, they do have to clean up after themselves. And so we have Swimply, if you have if you have a client that has a pool and they want to rent that pool out during the summer. I mean, we're getting up into that season. And I, I know this is weird and goofy, but I just wanted to throw it out there because I found it just kind of very interesting. Well, this is create a way of earning extra cash. So well, if you don't mind, you know. It's more so a, a good way for us to have a conversation. That's I'm always looking for, for really good openings to be, have conversations with our clients. It's Absolutely. about relationships. All right. Now, Greg. So, you know, Greg sends out a newsletter every month. And so they just released their newest newsletter. In here, they talk about the fact that there is a new, um, some new laws dealing with brokerage engagements. And it's right. not so much dealing with, with what you might think. Uh, what they did was they went in and, and we had several companies, most mm -hmm. of them from outside of Georgia, that were coming in and they were basically offering a seller or offering a homeowner between... 400 and, and, a, and a thousand bucks and that they would and, and they had just had to agree that when they sold their house they were going to sell it with them well that was creating a lien against that property and these people were spending were making 400 dollars, and then they were requiring them to list with this company if and they sold it any time for the next 40 years and that's a long time yeah. i mean so it created an issue. And well, it, it was very predatory is what it was. And so the new laws here says that, you know, you can't have a brokerage agreement that creates a lien. You also ha can't ha can't do one that runs with the land for the term on there kind of thing. Um, Meaning you, even though it wasn't this seller that agreed, the next yeah. buyer is not obligated yeah. or indebted. Basically, it's stay with the... Uh, the land, the property, not the owner itself. Now, one thing that does have the potential to impact us is like, like it limits all buyer broker, all brokerage and great engagements to one year. And so, uh, if you have an engagement like, like we have some long term clients, and and you know, especially in, like in the commercial range, yes, it's not that uncommon to have like commercial land, for example. We've had some commercial land listed for five years at, at one point, kind of thing, and so still listing it. <laughs> yeah, it's still listed, right? Um, but the the whole idea here is is that you know it had it, you know the the all engagement brokerage engagement agreements now are limited to one year, and so that's probably one of the biggest ones that has the most impact. Now you can re up that kind of thing. There's no problem with doing that, but just understand that that's what's kind of come out from the new ruling here, Correct. and and kind of one thing that just went through. Now, what's the median? How long have our homeowners been in our home? And so nationally, they keep throwing these national numbers around that the average homeowner's been in, been in their home for around 11 to 12 years. Well, and you got to remember that that real estate's local, right? And so uh, you can see that, you know, in some places like Los Angeles, California, it's almost 18 years. It's over 18 years, almost 19 years kind of thing. Here in Georgia, it's 8.9 years, which is up from 8.7 last year. So you know, this is just more of a, a, you know, FYI, so that you can understand who are, who our sellers are and, and our buyers and, and what does the housing market here look like kind of thing. 
Well, this is an indication of the market and the trend. And so, uh, whereas the old adage of, you know, like creating a legacy. So if people see opportunity in the special Atlanta market mm -hmm. when there's opportunity, they're going to move up or sell or invest. Yep. Now, there was a, a new study that came out and said, have you ever had suspicions that you are bidding against an imaginary buyer? And I, I bring this up just because I think this is something that we need to have conversations, especially with our buyers about. And, and as a listing agent, we have never once made up a buyer to, to force competition that we don't play that way. I know that there's a lot of people that, that suspect that, that, that may have gone on with different in different transactions. Uh, but you have to understand that, you know, the reasons for the seller, whether they accept an offer or not, it's not always just price. And, and, you know, like, like we are in a competitive bidding environment. Well, we are, we still don't have enough homes and the good homes good properties in good areas priced right sell quickly and so there is still a lot of competition out there and so you know this is something to have a conversation with your buyers about as well as your sellers but for our buyers it's like we are in a, in a very competitive environment however you know 80 percent of our buyers feel like like they're bidding against somebody not real and I, the reality of it is they probably are bidding against somebody real. There, there, we have, we only have about you know three months of standing inventory. We need six months of standing inventory to have a balanced market. So we we have more buyers even now. We have more buyers than we have sellers at the moment. And so the good properties, those have a ton of competition on them. They do, and, and we need to be able to explain this to our clients and. Not, hey. And sometimes it's not only that, Alan. It's sometimes it's that the seller, let's say you submit an offer and a seller, you were the only offer at the time. But during your negotiation back and forth, they have another offer. And the seller decided, yeah. you know what? This offer is much cleaner, even though it may not net me the most, but I don't want to deal with someone that's been nickel nine me to death. So, you know, the seller has a right to choose whatever offer they want. Um, so, you know, once again, don't don't feel like the listing agent is not doing their job because well, at the end of the day, they will benefit much more at a higher sale price than a lower one. But we also have to be conscious of the fact that uh, a lot of the public, not all of them, but th there's a pretty significant portion of our public that doesn't trust us. Mm -hmm. They don't, and because there's not a lot of transparency, and, and especially in the offer submittal process, there's no transparency. Like, like, like I submit an offer. Do I know that there's been a, multiple offers gone through? Do my buyers know that there's multiple offers gone through? Maybe, maybe not. I'm counting on the listing agent to, to, to call me back or just tell me what's honest, going on, that right. kind of stuff, be honest. And so, you know, in, in light of all the recent lawsuits and that kind of stuff, I just think it's, 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 you know, wise on us to have these conversations with our clients ahead of time kind of thing. Because Correct. Good properties, they are probably going to be bidding against other folks out there. Absolutely. Now, this old house, that TV show, they came out and did did a uh, did some very interesting uh, surveys and came out and said, you know, like like, are you do you have any plans on moving? And right now, um, about twenty six percent are considering moving, and six percent are moving. So thirty two percent of folks. Third. Are, I mean, like 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 you know, a third, yeah. You know, uh, a third are really in, you know, considering moving, looking at moving, wanting to move. And th th these are folks who own a home right now. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot more activity going on. Now, they, they also said, hey, look, what are the top reasons why you want to leave your current home? Number one is lifestyle, because regardless of what happens with interest rates, life happens, right? Babies are born, jobs are changed, you know, divorce. Um, I mean, like, like, there's so many things that goes on, uh, you know. High cost of living is another one uh, that we see a lot of people moving for. Upsizing and downsizing, that really comes back to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, climate, lifestyle, finances, eh, you know, uh, all that all that ties in together. Now, one of the things that, that I found most interesting about this study was they said, hey, for those homeowners who are planning to move, where you want to move to? And both baby boomers and Gen X's are really hot and heavy about Atlanta, Georgia. And, and this is this is the overall the 20 county MSA kind of thing. And so we 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 rate very high for our boomers and our Gen Xers. 
We didn't make the list on millennials and Gen Zs, but for our boomers and our Gen Xers, there are a lot of folks who want to move to our area. And so that's a very positive thing. It's interesting. Thing for us. The yeah. millennial Gen Z want to be in somewhere that's nice and warm, but their second choice is pretty cold. So that, <laughs> that's the opposite extreme. Yeah. That's well, then they go back to Jacksonville. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, so anyway, I just thought, thought that, was, that was good information to share. So this past week, the Fed, uh, so like, like the, the Atlanta Fed chief, he came out and, and, and said, hey, you know, victory is not clearly not in hand when it comes to inflation. And then the Fed released all their notes from their their um, prior meeting from their prior meeting. And, and then everyone, kind of, you know, the markets interpreted that as, oh, we're not going to have price cuts for a long time. And so because of that, interest yes, rates went up. went up, you know, 13.13 uh, of a percentage point kind of thing. Um, and so it did jump up this past week. But this is one of those things about mortgage rates. They're always going to do a little bit of this. We're still seeing them move forward. We know price cuts are coming, that kind of thing. So don't get discouraged just out of one week where, where things do kind of jump up. You guys, really quick, um, some new construction are offering much lower interest rate. And while I know this, the clients are stuck on, well, at the 7% interest rate, I'm only a, a four or $300,000. Guess what? If you can find one as a 4.99, you might be able to afford a much higher price yeah. purchase. Because at the end of the day, it is a monthly payment yeah. that you're concerned with that you can afford. We're loving the interest rates on new construction right now. So. Absolutely. So find out what what or what interest rate that the uh, new construction is offering. Yeah. And once again, you know, it's about buy down. Don't forget that the seller can buy down the, the buyer's rates. Yeah. And they're... The, Therefore, given a higher chance of a, a higher level home that your seller has been wanting. Well, and, and you know, like, like Ming's point ties in perfectly because, you know, uh, NAR went out and said, how low would rates need to be to make it in order for you to buy a home? And and you can see that, you know, 18 uh, percent or one below seven, 22 percent below six and 32 percent below five. If you can get below five, I mean, you're taking up two thirds of the marketplace that, that, that are willing to buy, mm -hmm. you can get in those rates. So that's a really great way to look. Now, the other thing is they said, do you think now is a good time to buy a house? And it, it's one of those where our younger buyers are really a strong yes. For our Gen Z and our millennials, 55% of millennials say yes. And, and taking that back to what we were talking about previously, What's going on in our millennials' lives? They're making families. There's a lot of changes There's in their lifestyle changes, changes. So they want to move. Same right. thing with our Gen Zs kind of thing. Even, you know, a third of Gen Xers say that now is a good time to uh, to buy a home. So, you know, it, it's one of those where that that's that's a really, like, this shows back to the, to the confidence that our folks have in the marketplace and what's going on. And then they also said, when do you think you'll be able to afford to buy a home? And so 43% of millennials think that they're going to be able to buy a home within the next year. Right. So would I be focusing on millennials right now? Absolutely. Yes or yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 22% of our Gen Z's, 21% of our boomers, I mean, of our Gen Xers, that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty strong place to be. Now, one other place where we're um, not so much interest rates, but down payment, USDA adjusted their areas they do this every year but mm -hmm. they just went in and they tweaked the areas that is usda and so what i'm showing you here on this map is like 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 the brown areas that's a no-go right so like like you're not gonna get anything in fayetteville that kind of thing however once we you know if you have yeah, clients like, that, that are looking to move out of there Petrie city that is a usda program yeah so that's not, Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, that, that those are great, great area. Yeah. Loca, most of Locust Grove is, is in Hampton. <laughs> so, you know, like 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 there is still a lot. And so for those folks that that are, you know, like on one hand, we know a lot of folks are driven by interest rate. On the other hand, a lot of folks don't want a down payment or don't have the money for a down payment. Maybe USDA would be a good choice for you to direct your and just your remember USDA to. is going to take a little bit to uh, get it approved. So yep. make sure you allow enough financing contingency period for that. Well, and the other thing is make sure that you have a lender who knows mm -hmm. what they're doing when it comes to. I, I mean, like 
USDA is not super, uh, you know, challenging, but still going through there with with a lender who, who who doesn't know what they're doing and doesn't understand the steps in the process. This is you want a, a seasoned, experienced lender that, that you're working with uh, for USDA. All right, FHA launched a new loan modif- modification option, and so we've seen where FHA is really. Um, very motivated to keep people in homes. They don't want to come back anything. And we're seeing the, the we're seeing that play out. Like how many HUD homes are there in this? Because all a HUD home is is an FHA mortgage right, that's, that's closed on. Right. And, and it's some of our lowest levels ever. And so even now they're continuing to make sure that 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 folks can get refinanced, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so like like the, now there's a new program. So if you have any clients who are struggling out there, uh, the the benefit here is that. I don't really know anyone who's upside down. Now, seeing that this is, you know, like like FHA, like all the lenders are wanting to work with folks. At the same time, I came across and I saw a headline. And this is what the headline said. Headline says, U.S. foreclosure activity increases. And when it, and you look at that, you think, wow, that's, that's, uh, it's up. That's significant compared yeah. to 2021. Well, but then when you actually cl- like, look like, at the so trend, here's the headline. And then, no, then you look at the actual report and it says U.S. foreclosure activity increases from 22, but still below pre-pandemic. Like this is where we're at. Now, also, when you look at that graph, that's 0.26 of a percentage. That's 0.26 of 1%. Um, and that is up 0.23 of a of one percent last year so 0.23 of one percent last year or the year before 0.26 of one percent last year we're not seeing a four like 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 and, and we keep I, I get i get phone calls i get agents i get buyers everyone wants to tell me how foreclosures are about to go through the roof well also it doesn't help when the marketer for foreclosure companies meaning they won't give you all the yeah. classes and join the platform and everything else on foreclosure because you know it is coming um you know so therefore they're advertising that so the consensus among the agents and also the general public, because they're announcing all this, is that there is a foreclosure when there is not because the inventory is still low. I, I just want to ask you a very simple question. Do you know anybody upside down? Because we don't. We don't know a soul that is upside Even down. Even if somebody ha- has a financial do- difficulty, they can sell that property prior to foreclosure and still walk away with average of fifty thousand. Or the banks are working with them. Yeah, you know, uh, FHA is working with them. That kind of stuff. So we, we just don't see this market Help out your there. Client yep. keep and retain their home. Yep. Now, with the light of everything that's been going on, you know, home ownership is is one of those things that people sometimes down talk. Mm-hmm. And what I found very interesting is. Do you know that homeowner home ownership trends are increasing? Like, like, you know, back in 2012, 64% of people owned a home in the US. In, in 22 and 23, that percentage is continuing to increase. So overall, as a percentage wise, more and more Americans are being homeowners. And this is really, really important. That being said, it's not equal across the board. Correct. And so, like, like this is the home ownership trends, um, you know, Among by race, ethnic groups, right? And so, what, what's interesting is that white home ownership rate actually has gone down, while a lot of others go up. And and I'm not here trying to talk about race. What I, what I'm here to talk about is if you want to help any community, um, if you want to help the folks that you live with, the folks that you hang out with. And if you want to help people with wealth, it comes from home ownership. And so the more, the more, you know, like, like wealth is tied up in the home ownership. You want to help communities. You want to help people help them buy homes. Correct. It's super important out there. Now Zillow came out and they adjusted their forecast for regional home prices. And, and, you know, and so they're always editing, you know, adjusting what do they think is happening with home prices. And, and home the prices data home prices. is should be just in time because if you based on old data, it's not going to work. Yeah. And what you see is, it, you know, what's the areas in blue, these are the areas that are going to, that, that they're expecting home prices to grow the most and kind of across the U S 
uh, Atlanta, I mean, you can see that overall in the U.S., majority blue kind mm -hmm. of thing. And Atlanta is sitting, you know, they're predicting at a 6% property value increase over the la over the next year. We think that's really healthy. Like, like we, we don't really kind of disagree at all. But one thing I want to show you is, is a little bit of the breakdown of over the past year. And so this is what's happened in home prices between January 23 and January 24. And what you'll see is the darker the blue, the bigger the increase. Mm -hmm. So Atlanta itself has been very moderately increasing home prices. But you know, outskirts, you know what's been growing? The outskirts. The boonies. Yeah. yeah. Out, out in God's country kind of thing. And once you get outside of, of Atlanta itself, that's where we're seeing some of the highest property value increases in, in the state kind of thing. You're always going to have some counties that, that, that struggle and have some different challenges, but it's just very interesting to see. Everyone thinks, oh, Atlanta is where everything happens. It's always in Atlanta. No, it's what's happening around Atlanta Excellent. that, you know, so, so those outside counties are the ones who are growing in property values higher than the, mm -hmm. than the actual interior counties when it comes to that. Overall median sale prices, like I said, 5.8%. So we're running right in that 6%. Now, overall number of sales, January home sales rose 3.1%. And we're very, very glad to see that. Um, however, our pending sales, pending sales are down 7% year over year. We have not gotten back to where we need to be just in the volume of sales. And with the housing market activity and what's going on, we kind of lost some steam in January because, you know, rates dropped really big and, 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 and we were went. so thankful. And then they've just kind of, yeah. they kind of plateaued and wiggled around some kind of thing. And that has really kind of stopped a lot of our activity as far as that's going on. And once again, you know, about rates, yeah. you know, everybody talks about it um, as an agent. Think creatively, meaning get a seller. I mean, as a listing agent, when you're part of your consultation, should about should you should talk about helping the buyer buy the rate down so more people can afford a property. Um, you know what have you? So, or go new construction. Yeah. So these are things that you, you need to think options. about. Now, overall, new listings of homes are up ten percent. So we're seeing more inventory come on, which we're really glad to see. However, we're still under last year. But what we want to kind of talk to you briefly about here is that is what happens on new listings by month mm -hmm. this time of year and, and for the for forever kind of thing, like clockwork every year, the number of listings increases from now all the way through till June. If you are waiting around to reach out to your sellers, you are missing the boat. Now is the time to be reaching out and engaging with your with 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 I mean, with homeowners. Correct. We we looked at you know like like thirty uh, you know a third of homeowners are considering selling and buying that kind of stuff. Now is the time. Please don't make us beg. Right. What we're saying is like you really need to be reaching out and engaging with with your with your homeowners yeah, right now. Right now. Because like now's the time when people are putting things on the market. They put it on the market now in preparation for the summer and mm -hmm. moving during the summer and doing those kind of things. So it's really important that we that we look at that. Now, let's change gears a little bit. Let's talk about multifamily apartments. And so, you know, John Burns Research and Consulting, they did this whole new apartment survey. And what they found is that in a lot of markets, there has been, and especially in the Sun Belt here where we are, mm -hmm. um, new construction over the last, uh, apartment construction over the last really two or three years here in Atlanta has been huge. And over the past year, massive. Um, you know, in, in Atlanta, there's, there's 20,000 units delivered in the last, last year. Last months, yeah. Currently under construction in Atlanta, 34,000 units. It's 150% what they were doing. Yeah. So what we're seeing is, but now the good news is, is that in Atlanta, multifamily permits are down almost 30%. So like that huge construction boom is really going by the, the wayside. We're not seeing that happen. And so can expect to see apartment rents moderating, holding steady. Correct. When it comes to apartments, it, it's it's about still about supply versus demand. We have a lot of supply coming on the market for buyers. The reason this is good news is this, the number one source of down payment money is from savings. savings so. so if they can get lower rents, this is something that, that, that really does bode well for the future kind of thing. No one wants to stay in an apartment forever. 
No. You know, I mean, there's always a certain percentage will, but you know, I don't feel like we compete with apartments at all because you know, like, like, but it's a step up from with apartment an apartment. Your interest rates should. always a hundred percent. Right. All right. So, all right. This week, we've got a couple of CE classes. Tomorrow, we have license law for agents and brokers, and that's going to be Martin, the, the marvelous Airport. Martin, oh, uh, Fayetteville. Oh, it's a fan. Sorry. Yeah, yep. You were close. Now, on now we are over in the airport office on Wednesday. We have Take a Walk on the Wild Side. There you go. And uh, and we're going to be going over all the different kind of pests and how to deal with them. So Yeah, please join um, the uh, pest control company because there are, as our environment and climate changes, yep. there are different items out there that you may not be aware of. If nothing else, it'll be a self-education for you as well. So if you guys have a great week, we'd be any kind of service, please call text from oh, emails. Don't forget, license also require every renewal cycle. So please make sure you get it in yep. before too late. Yep. Thank ah. you. Have a great Monday. And